What is up my friends? You are very welcome along to tonight's news roundup. I'm going to be bringing you the latest breaking news around Liverpool's apparent interest in Hincapia of Bayer Leverkusen. We're going to be talking about another potential Mohamed Salah replacement who's been linked and a couple of other bits and pieces as well. I'll be bringing you guys a couple of lines from Jurgen Klopp's press conference and of course asking you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do please drop a like on the video and if you haven't hit that subscribe button, you know what to do. Also, we are going to be launching a brand new channel. Well, I'm going to say next Wednesday because that's the first bit of live content we're going to have on top of the league. But I am going to record a couple of Champions League previews on Saturday, which will be going out on top of the league on Sunday. They're going to be about who gets out of the Champions League groups and how the English teams get on in their first week's game. So please do scan the QR code you see on the screen or go into the link of this video, the description, I should say, of this video, where you will see a link to join top of the league and hopefully becomes your new favourite football channel after Anfield Agenda, of course. But yeah, looking forward to seeing you guys and talking more footy. So look, let's get stuck into it tonight. And the big breaking news story that has just come out over the last hour or two is that apparently Liverpool are closing in on a deal for Piero Hincapia of Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, LFC transfer room were the first ones we seen to put this out, linking at market 90 EC as their source, saying Piero Hincapia, 21 year old, to Liverpool is very advanced at this stage. They go on to say that the fee involved will be in and around 48 million pound, and the deal is being anticipated to be done either in January or in the summer. Now look, I don't know that we can hang our hats on this. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you this is a done deal. But I will say to you is, I hope it is. Because Hincapia for me would be an ideal addition to the Liverpool defensive line and would provide much cover for Virgil van Dijk and pressure. So we were doing tonight's live stream and one of the things that came up was about Virgil van Dijk and is he past his peak? And we were speaking about the criticism he received from the Dutch press and it makes me even more astounded that we didn't bring a defender in this window. Because yes, I do think Verge's best days are potentially behind him. I don't think he's anywhere near as bad as some of the Dutch media have made out. But I'm shocked that we didn't bring in that defender to pressurise him. And if Liverpool look and want Hincapia, then brilliant. And maybe, maybe Bayer Leverkusen just didn't want to sell him this summer. And maybe that's why Liverpool had to hang off. And if that's the case... Good stuff. We know Jurgen Klopp likes to keep an eye on his top targets and he doesn't really like to move away from his number one or two on his list. Now, I hope that this isn't going to be another Jude Bellingham situation where we're linked with this player for the next two years and then he ends up somewhere else. But if we take this story of face value, brilliant. Exactly the type of signing I'd, I'd like us to be making. And, you know, speaking to some Ecuadorian football fans previously, when we were doing the looking at the Caicedo transfer, they were saying that he's one of the reasons, along with Caicedo and I think maybe the kid uh, Estupanan from Brighton, are some of the reasons why they've had such a good national team. So, you know, you can only say that Xavi Alonso's done a great job at Leverkusen and this guy has become somebody who many Liverpool fans like myself hope joins the club. And that's. That's all I'm really going to say in it because anything else would just be adding fuel to the fire, I think, at this point. But I want to know how you guys feel about it. Is he somebody that you'd like to see come through the arrivals door at Kirby? Um, also on the fee, £48 million. I guess, I guess that's okay. You know, he's still 21 years of age. Um, and what you've seen other defenders move for in the recent windows, I guess £48 million wouldn't be, wouldn't be too unreasonable. Um would still keep us below. I think we've only got five players we've spent over £50 million on since, um, well, ever, really. So we'll keep, again, him just below that threshold. But I think that's a fair enough price. And, again, I just hope it comes through. Another name that we've been linked to today is for a potential Mohamed Salah replacement. So we've been speaking about these over videos over the last week or two. And one story today that comes out of sport over in Spain via Estadio Deportivo is that Liverpool are reportedly interested in and keeping tabs on Athletic Club Bilbao's Nico Williams, the younger brother of Iñaki Williams. No, not Neko Williams, the one that used to play for us from Noah Forest. I'm talking about Nico Williams, spelled a little bit differently. Uh, this piece says that Liverpool have made contact with the Spanish club about the winger and that was during the summer. But 
interestingly, it goes on to say that he's out of contract at the end of the season at Athletic Club Bilbao, but they also mentioned that he has a 50 million euro release clause. Now, because he's under the age of 24, I'm sure that they would be entitled to some training compensation if his contract was out of date and he left on a Bosman. I think they're probably entitled to some level of compensation. What I don't know, as I sit here right now, is if it's similar to the situation in England. For an example, if a young player moves from one Premier League club or one English club to another English club and he's out of contract, I know that you have to agree uh, compensation with that club or it goes to a tribunal. But let's say the same English player went to Bayern Munich. I think the fee is only about 250 grand at that point in compensation if he moves outside of the jurisdiction. I don't know if it's the same in Spain, so maybe somebody in the comment section can help me out on that one. But either way, he's a big talent and... I much prefer the look of him than I do of his older brother in Yaki Williams. I think he's the better of the two brothers. So, you know, take from that what you will. Uh, again, no idea if it's true or if it isn't true, but it's another link that we're here to talk about. Uh, a little bit from Jurgen Klopp's press conference today. As of as myself and many others have been annoyed about it, the manager has also been annoyed about the fact that once again, after an international break, we're faced with a half past 12 kickoff. And... He's not just making up his frustration. The statistics back this up. Since 2015, Liverpool have had 12, 12.30 p.m. kickoffs after an international break. That is more than, well, that is exactly twice the next highest team. And interestingly, Manchester United and Manchester City have had three times less. I think they've had four, something like that. Four games after the international break at uh, half past 12 whereas we've now had 12 and our next game against Everton after the next international break is surprise surprise 12 30 p.m so I wish that TNT formerly BT Sport would move this round a little bit because we keep getting shafted now you might think it's a big deal but it is our players and any Premier League club's players go all around the world on these international breaks and Liverpool right now have had a situation where Today, when he had his press conference, Jurgen Klopp hadn't even seen Alexis McAllister, Lucho Diaz and Darwin Nunes and Alison Becker since the international break. And that was 24 hours before we play tomorrow. So you can see why we're at a bit of a disadvantage there. If we played at 3 o'clock, it gives a few more hours recovery. If we played on Sunday, obviously it gives you a whole new extra day to train and plan. So yeah, just spread them around a little bit please. TNT Sports and stop, uh, stop giving us the short end of the stick uh, also there was a story during the rounds to say that Kagra Sayunchu um, turned down advances from Newcastle and Liverpool before he completed his move after his contract at Leicester City expired over to Athletic Madrid or Atletico Madrid I'm not sure I believe that because I'm not sure Sayunchu is in any way suitable for us or our system or is good enough to play for Liverpool so again take that with a massive pinch of salt so that is pretty much it for me tonight my friends but again we will be live tomorrow for the Wolves game starting at half past 11 so hopefully you can come and join us for that we'll have our full watch along post-match content match reaction player ratings and all the usual stuff and again just to give a shout out to our brand new second channel top of the league make sure you either scan the QR code there or use the link in the description of this video to come across and sub and yeah I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you guys if not tomorrow then on Sunday evening much love bye bye